Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 16 of season 2 of the F1 2020 McLaren driver career mode. Yes, I mentioned it in yesterday's channel update video. We're back with more Formula 1 content. March has finally rolled around. I'm really, really motivated and looking forward to diving into some more gameplay for you guys. So obviously if you are new around here and you aren't already... Make sure you click that subscribe button as well. We're trying to hit 15k at the moment, so if you can help us get one step closer to that, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But if you missed out on the last video uh, from this series back at the Singapore Grand Prix, definitely, definitely one that I would recommend going back and checking it out. There, of course, will be spoilers in just one moment. So yeah, this is your chance, obviously, to go back and check that video out if you did miss it. But yeah, have a look then at last time out race. We now have only a 32-point lead in the Drivers' World Championship as we were able to further extend our margin over our teammate Lando Norris. However, Mercedes, and more notably Lewis Hamilton, are getting quicker again. They have got the quickest car on paper at the moment. Hamilton, only th another 35 behind our teammate there. So the gap between the top three, pretty even between all three of us at the moment. It's still looking like, you know, we're pretty safe in the Constructors' Championship. 144 clear of our main rivals, Mercedes. Their Renault is still holding on to P3 at the moment after a very quiet but consistent world championship by those guys at the moment. You know, racing point just stroll has not delivered to the same level that Sergio Perez has been able to as well there. But yeah, we're still looking pretty good constructors-wise. It's just the drivers' championship. Can Hamilton and Lando Norris close up the gap? That is the real question on everyone's mind at the moment. Now, in terms of R&D progress heading into this weekend, you can see Mercedes are further bringing upgrades at the moment. You know, they overtook us about the British Grand Prix and really haven't looked back over the last couple of weeks. We have been slowly adding some more upgrades to the car as well over the last couple of weekends. I don't think we've got anything currently going on to the car, so we might try and focus and stick a couple of extra aero. Uh, we might go an aero and a chassis upgrade ready for the next weekend. We'll go with uh, the rear diffuser. Hopefully gives us an extra bit of back-end stability. And then we'll go with a big chassis upgrade as well. Though. We'll go with the front nose cone structure. 3,000 R&D points for that. But it should massively leapfrog us to the front on the chassis side of things once again. So we will get both of those in the works as well. But yeah, heading to round 16 though this weekend. Back at the Caspian Sea. It's time for the Russian Grand Prix. So here we are then, ready for one-shot qualifying for round 70 of the season. I, I may have managed to somehow mess up my numbers. I think, what have I done? Eight seasons now on F1 2020 over the course of the channel with different championships and things like that. And yeah, still, still cannot seem to remember that Russia is round 17 of the World Championship now. But getting ready though for qualifying here for the Russian Grand Prix. The car feels quick once more as it always has done over the course of this championship. It's more a case of just seeing what the pace of the Mercedes is going to be like over the course of this weekend. But yeah, hopefully we can try and have a bit of a better qualifying out than we did last time round. Obviously, if you guys remember the Singapore Grand Prix, qualifying did not go too well. There's you can see the top end speed of the car still incredibly strong. Lando Norris rumped into an early lead down in towards turn two. And then make sure you get nice and tidy. Now, obviously, this track is still a lot about trying to take as much curb as you dare in quite a few places around this circuit, so we've got to be careful of that. That is exactly what I mean. You, you take a lot of curve in most places still. Now, so you've got to remember where there are a lot of sausage curves now, in especially sort of the middle half, or the middle half, the middle sector of the lap. So you have obviously got to be careful that you're not trying to use too much of those. But Hamilton so far looking very, very quick in his Mercedes. That was a nice line through there. A lot of curve, but a nice line nonetheless as well just struggling to hit the apex through the next corner make sure we get a good run out onto the back straight to him we might run a little bit too high on the wings in all we'll see what to try and drop it back down to four ready for the grand prix as we head down in towards the final sector of the lap though lando norris and hamilton swapping positions there as they're both trying to take points out of me in the driver's world championship the moment in towards the final few corners. That corner is so difficult to get right. That is not the line through there. I'm not even going to try and hide away from that awful corner cut. But look at that out of nowhere in towards the final corner. Bottas suddenly up into the lead of this session through the final turn. P4 for ourselves. But Bottas out of nowhere sticks it on pole. Bottas! 
qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves of our top three. Bottas, Hamilton and Lando Norris. With qualifying wrapped up, we now have our grid lineup for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Look how close the field is ready for the Russian Grand Prix. The top four cars, as you'd expect McLaren and Mercedes, are clear out the front there. A tenth of a second separating your top three on the grid there. But it is Bottas the only one to dip into the 128s. So obviously, I kind of forgot just how good Bottas is around this circuit as well. But yeah, the top four separated by a quarter of a second. And then, I mean, you look down from what? Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll? All the way down to Esteban Ocon there are separated by like less than two tenths of a second. It's insane how close the midfield battle is as well at this stage of the championship. Obviously you've got the back marker six as always then a further six tenths off the rest of the group there. But Renault, they're still third place over on the constructors. Eighth and fourteenth at the end of qualifying there. Could we finally see Racing Point closing up that gap? They need Stroll to perform in the final few rounds of the championship. They've certainly got a car capable of it. Let's dive in then here, ready to the Russian Grand Prix. Welcome along then to Sochi and the Russian Grand Prix, one of eight cities in the world to play host to both the Olympics and a Formula One race. It's a Grand Prix that's proven difficult to crack for anyone beyond the first two rows of the grid in recent years, so let's see if that can change today. Built on the shores of the Black Sea, the Sochi Autodrome is a 3.6 mile tour around some of the venues built for the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. Close barriers may make overtakes more challenging, but with 56% of the lap taken absolutely flat out, we certainly won't be wanting for pure speed. A fitting arena then to do battle at the pinnacle of motorsport. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today from the midfield teams, or trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Mr. Monaco, Sergio Perez and Verstappen, Leclerc, Ricardo, Stroll and Alexander Albon, Gasly, Vettel, Daniel Kvyat and Ocon, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen and George Russell, Raikkonen and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. So here we are then, ready on the grid for round 17 of the season. And I'll be honest, I see the potential for some absolute scenes down in towards the first corner here. Mercedes... They were a very, very quick car around this track, but we generally have a slightly better top-end speed over those guys, and that's actually been a good reminder uh, that we're going to take back down to four on the front wing there. But yeah, very, very much looking forward to the Russian Grand Prix. Again, it's a track that has delivered next to nothing uh, in the real world of Formula 1, but on the F1 games, it does still seem to be a track that can deliver a little bit of action here and there. Nonetheless, so hopefully, yeah, we can have a race like that here today. We start in P4. Of course, the aim, as always, is to try and beat Lando and Hamilton there. Obviously, we're not so worried about Bottas. If he romps off into the lead, then Bottas has done what Bottas does and carries his Mercedes contract for another year. But let's dive in then here, ready for the Russian Grand Prix. Round, th uh, round 17 of the World Championship. Five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. No hold at all as we try and get a good start down in towards the first corner here, straight up the inside of our teammate Lando Norris. There is Hamilton, ducks into the slipstream of his teammate, pulls back out again as he tries to go defensive on ourselves in towards turn one. There, a big lockup from Lando, but he finds the room around the outside. Lando Norris around the outside of Hamilton and myself through turn two there. So a good start by our teammates. We just felt a bit boxed in at the start of this Grand Prix. Remember, we've got a whole lot to lose and not too much to gain at this stage of the World Championship as Perez tries to have a bit of a look in towards the next corner there. But Bottas still leads the way as we head out of Sector 1 for the first time in this Grand Prix. Lando Norris in P2 then, making a one spot ahead 
of Lewis Hamilton, but obviously we need to try and apply the pressure to these guys, as well as trying to break away from Sergio Perez, who has runt away, king of the midfield, I've dubbed him, throughout the entirety of this World Championship, and yeah, it seems to be once again there, that it is Sergio Perez who's broken away from the rest of the group there, Charles Leclerc is hanging, hanging somewhat near the front lot as well there, but yeah, Bottas stays where he started, Hamilton and Norris do the old swap, and then I think the most of the order behind us has stayed pretty similar as well. We're monitoring somewhere on the ICE, be aware that we will start to see a loss of power. And that is not a message we need as we head on to lap two of the Grand Prix, and we're on the ICE, so we might need to try and put some new parts in ready for the next Grand Prix aim, which obviously does take us to the infamous Su Suzuka circuit as well. Very much looking forward to racing back there once more. But yeah, not quite what we need at this stage of the World Championship. Russia is quite a power-orientated circuit as well on the F1 calendar, so we do need to be a bit careful. So DRS has now been enabled, and I think everyone still just inside the top five has got the DRS on each other. I think Sergio Perez has now just dipped out of that gap behind us. Still doing a fantastic job, though, to stay as close as he has at the start of the Grand Prix, but hopefully now, you know, this can sort of fit into McLaren's favour again even more. Try and use the straight line speed advantage we've got over Mercedes, and just hopefully try and amplify that over the next couple of laps. We need to stick close to Hamilton. Obviously, the soft tyres can go pretty deep into the Grand Prix here. Tyre wear has never been a particularly big issue. The team's still warning us about the power output as well, though. But yeah, if we can stick close to Hamilton, maybe we can still try and line up a move. Lando sets a new fast lap. We go even faster at the end of lap three there. And look at that, we are a lot closer to Hamilton now in this Grand Prix. Getting into a bit more of a groove with this car at the moment. There is Lando really starting to apply the pressure to Valtteri at the front of the field. So are we seeing what we've seen so often before with this car where it really does come alive in a race trim here? Only time will tell. Perhaps Mercedes, they've done it before on F1 2020, where they just seem to let everything at their disposal when they need to. But at the moment, the team in orange are looking better than the team in silver and black. Lap 5 now, and unfortunately for us, the engine warning light has come on. I think it's both the ICE and the control electronics that have got a lot of wear on them at the moment, but we have still got a good run on Lewis Hamilton as we head down the back straightaway here. We might be able to go for a bit of a send in towards Sector 3 up the inside of our main championship rival there from a different team and we do just about hook it up right around the outside we go through the next corner there and now up into P3 of the Grand Prix and like Anthony Davidson said pre-race if you've got your cars in P2 and P3 maybe you can just try and cause a bit of a headache for the leader there I think Lando is doing that enough at the moment as we try and really open up the run through the final couple of corners however now Hamilton's going to get the DRS back on us as we head down towards Turn 1 and we're going to have nothing to defend ourselves with. I don't think the Merc has got enough poke, though, as we head back down in towards the first corner there. Hamilton might need to try and save his tyres a little bit over the next couple of laps. You never quite know how much the AI have had to push. There we go, lap seven, and the team want us in at the end of this one, so we might be trying to do a bit of an undercut on Valtteri Bottas, if possible. I'm a bit worried about where we might come out relative to some of the backmarket cars. We might find ourselves a bit too close to the Williams and the Haas towards the end of the Grand Prix, but if that's what the team think is the best way of going about it, we should probably put some trust in them. I would be really, really intrigued to know what wings Lando Norris is running in this Grand Prix, because down the straights, he is still absolutely romping away from us. Obviously, we haven't had the DRS over the last couple of laps, but the top end speed of this thing is absolutely in another league in comparison to Mercedes at the moment. However, we need a really nice, tidy pit entry now. Make sure we get it slowed down on the marks. That was pretty much as good as I think I'm essentially going to be able to get it. Not quite one of those lucky ones where we accidentally nail the pit entry as well. But I've noticed there's sort of a trio of cars. I think that's a Renault and Alfa Romeo. I think that's Raikkonen, I'm going to guess, as that's not a particularly great stop. No, Giovinazzi ahead of Sebastian Vettel and Esteban Ocon in this Grand Prix. Now, we either need the Haas, the Williams and Raikkonen to get on with it or to drop back a little bit more as well here as we head back out of the pit lane. Are we going to come out too close to behind them? Very, very bumpy pit exit here around the Sochi Autodrome. We're about 1.3 back. Not ideal, but hopefully we won't close them up too quickly. All over the back now of Nicholas Latifi. He's going to get some DRS off his teammate. I can't imagine the Williams is going to be much of a threat. Top end speed as we'll have a look to the outside there. A big old squeeze actually coming 
from the Canadians. We're going to have to send it right around the outside there as Lando Norris into the pit lane as well as, I'm guessing, Valtteri Bottas. Luckily, I don't think Latifi has held us up too much, but I'm a bit worried about all these guys still in front as we head down in towards the final couple of corners there. Unfortunately for us, Latifi's going to get the first call, not George Russell, who's still in front of us here as we head through the final turn. But this could all really work out in Hamilton's favour at the moment as we try to get the power down. Can we get a run on the second Williams here? We're going to be so close as we've been getting towards the first kick there. There comes Valtteri Bottas and Lando Norris back out onto the circuit there. And I think, actually, Magnussen might be between them. No, Lando keeps the nose up the inside there. Magnussen having absolutely none of it, though. And that's going to drop Lando Norris back into our clutches a lot more. They give Bottas a bit of breathing room. Here we go then, Lando Norris and myself trying to get a run on Kevin Magnussen as we head out onto the back straight where I think, yeah, one's definitely going to be able to get past and we'll certainly have a look up the inside as well. Oh, a little bit of contact with our teammate there. A pretty scuffy move in the end as I think Magnussen was planning on trying to defend it a whole lot more than I was ever willing to give him credit for. But yeah, a little bit of contact between myself and our teammate. Hopefully this hasn't cost us too much to Lewis Hamilton in this Grand Prix. We'll get confirmation in just a moment as the Mercedes man, I think, is no, he's not. Hamilton stayed at another lap here. So he's gone really far into this Grand Prix. Can we now get a run on our teammate Lando Norris as we head back down in towards turn two here? Obviously heading through the turn one kink now. Lando aware of it. He's going to go a bit defensive. Honestly, he's going to go defensive in towards the first corner. But can we hook it up right around the outside? We go and Lando Norris, nothing he can do to defend himself in that situation. And we now move up into maybe net P2 unless Hamilton has pulled out a worldly of an overcut. We are really flying on these medium tyres with just a few to go here from the Russian Grand Prix. I'm sure all the last of the pitters are now in. And are we going to be able to get past Hamilton? Yes, we are clean ahead of the Mercedes man there. Lando Norris is going to be wet ahead of him as well as for whatever reason he's gone onto hard compound tyres. So I think Hamilton is just consolidating P4 in this Grand Prix there. Not a good day for our fellow Brit. But we are taking some big time out of Valtteri Bottas at the moment. I don't know if it just takes a couple of laps to get these tyres worn in, get them up into the good groove, or what, as we run a little bit wide through Turn 4. That just goes to show how hard we're pushing at this stage of the day. Less than three laps to go to the end of this one. Can we close down the gap? Just over one lap to go then, and I think it was absolutely critical we're able to get ourselves inside the DRS zone of Valtteri Bottas now as we head towards the final lap of this Grand Prix. We're definitely not close enough to go for anything just yet. We probably won't be any close enough to go for anything down in towards Turn 1 as well. But we are closing down this gap with just one to go. We've had many late race battles over the course of this championship. There is the back end choice to kick out massively in towards the final few corners of lap 12 here. But we're just one to go. Are we now going to be able to apply any pressure to Valtteri Bottas and try and take this race victory away from him? Not a good run out of the final corner there. That has pretty much ruined any chance, any slim chance of getting close to him down in towards turn one. But you can still see the way the gap comes back down in towards the first corner of the first proper braking zone of the lap. Taking way too much curb through turn one there. That's just how much we're pushing to try and get anywhere possible to him in the final lap of this Russian Grand Prix. Like I said, we've had so many late race battles over the course of this championship. This McLaren absolutely comes alive in the latter stages of races there. Mercedes have got a very, very quick car at the moment, but he's certainly got a bigger advantage on Saturday than Sunday. Feels very much almost like a 2013 Mercedes at the moment, but in towards the final few corners, that is not the line we needed through there, though. That is going to completely cost us as we head in towards the final DRS straight of this uh, Russian Grand Prix there. We will activate the DRS nonetheless. We'll see if we can just get a little bit closer to Valtteri Bottas. Seven tenths, six tenths. The gap is still coming down at the moment as we head down in towards one of the final big breaking zones of the Grand Prix. But I don't think now, unless Bottas has a huge mishap in the final few corners of this Russian Grand Prix, we're practically pushing him along. You can see just how much curve we're trying to take trying to find anything we possibly can but in towards the final few corners of the Russian Grand Prix Valtteri Bottas the king of Russia on F1 is going to once again claim that crown and we come through for another P2 yes that's a podium excellent drive the team have worked especially hard this weekend and this is a fantastic reward
another superb Russian Grand Prix comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy and to stay out of trouble. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They pushed and pushed and found some fantastic performance. It was just a pleasure to watch. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Our championship leaders retain their position, but their lead is shrinking. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the Russian Grand Prix in another very, very memorable race. The battles between Mercedes and McLaren at the moment is certainly, certainly one that I'm absolutely loving in the latter stages of this World Championship. But it is Mercedes once again taking race victory there. Is that three in a row now since the uh, Italian Grand Prix? Yeah, they very, very much seem like a team that is difficult to beat come Sunday. We get so close. How often are we going to finish P2 over the course of this championship? That is anyone's guess into the final few rounds of the season. But, on the other hand, we're doing everything we need to nonetheless there. Like I said, Bottas takes the race victory. We come through for P2 with the fastest lap bonus point there. Gives us 19 on the board. Further extending our gap over Lando by 4 and 7 over Lewis Hamilton there. Perez is always king of the midfield in P5, ahead of Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, Ricardo, Albon and Stroll there, meaning both racing points and both Red Bulls get some points on the board there. Alpha Tower is just missed out and you can see the rest of your finishes there on your screens as well there. Championship-wise, 36 now, the gap at the top of the standing, so, you know, with, with six, uh, five races to go even, it's looking good at the moment. Not guaranteed, but looking good for ourselves at this late stage of the World Championship there. Bottas gets over the 200-point mark as we jump over the 300-point mark as well there. And it does officially now mean Sergio Perez cannot win the World Championship this year. 131 points available with the late... Uh, sorry, 130 points. 130 points? 130 points available uh, in the final fail of races of this World Championship there. Constructors-wise, though, again, Mercedes do take a couple of points out of us. Three points closer at the end of the weekend, but still looking very, very good in the Constructors' battle there. Ferrari re Red Bull as well into P5. is racing point now, just 10 behind Renault for the battle for P3 there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we will be back very, very soon. Ready for round 18, we head to Suzuka. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.